Right, we're here at the IDEF 2019 exhibition with Jens Orlerud, who's the business development manager for Fleur UAS. We're talking about the Black Hornet uh, unmanned aerial vehicle, which you can see here. Uh, the company has integrated it in a launch container onto the FNSS vehicle that you can see behind us. Jens, tell us a little bit about this. The v VRS, as we call it, the Vehicle Reconnaissance Systems, is basically a spin-off of the personal reconnaissance systems that have been a huge success all over the world. Right now, I think there is 34 countries that just have the Black Hornet in operations, okay. including the UK, US, France, uh, and those customers are so happy that we now have decided to go for a vehicle-mounted system that could actually be launched from inside a vehicle without exposure of the troops inside, do a close recce of the vicinity of the vehicle, do a recce of, for instance, a foot patrol, and also for uh, main battle tanks, who has very few people, only three or four in them, they could, uh, in order to reduce the combat fatigue, use the Black Hornet to actually survey and recce around their uh, forward operating position. And is this kind of development, is that based on recent operational experience that users have had or, or user feedback or is it a prospective development from, from the company? It's, it's a little bit of the both, but we also see that there is a need when you're using armoured vehicle into a combat zone. You don't like to expose the soldier unnecessarily. Uh -huh. So to be able to do that from under the hatch gives the, opera the uh, operational operation very much better enhancement because basically this is a flying binocular. Yeah. It goes out to two kilometers okay. and you can uh, see things from different angles and if you have a fixed mount like a big sight or a sensor on a mast, you are very limited in the angles you are able to see different things in. Okay. Yeah. And then um, you explained to us earlier that the system is automated so it maintains its, its height and things like that and that's designed to reduce the user workload, is that right? Yeah, we know that inside a modern combat vehicle the amount of information that the commander, the gunner and all the other people has to uh, be able to uh, congest are really huge. So we try to make this as simple as possible. So there are several ways of operating this. One is the preset waypoints. So it will actually automatically launch and then go through that route. The second one is that it's very easy to operate. So you have this small hand controller where you have forward, backward, tilt, tilt both ways and also going sideways. Okay. So it's basically not, you don't have to be a pilot to operate it. As we jokingly said, even an infantry can do it yeah. and they're highly, highly efficient in doing so. Okay. Um, and you explained as well that it's a, a modular system so the entire UAV can be taken apart, parts can be replaced if they're damaged or you can also fit a thermal camera to the front. Yep. Is that a capability that is retained from the first generation? Uh, generation 1 and 2 was one compact piece. Uh, we saw that that really increased the maintenance cost and the life cycle cost for our customer due to the fact that each time something on the helicopter broke it has to be sent back to Norway for repair. Now we see that with a modularity that we could detach the battery detach the rotors and even detach the camera nose. This makes it much cheaper for the customer in a long-term perspective because then they could buy some spares of the camera, some spares of the battery, spares of rotors and just change it themselves instead of having to send a uh, helicopter back to Norway every time. That's great. It's a very exciting development and uh, I, I suppose as well that you you could envisage users using it to assess uh, damage onto a target or, yep. or effectiveness of artillery fires and things like that. So basically what I say is that we have three main uses here. One is of course to protect the troops by uh, doing a recce of their uh, vicinity and their potential foot patrol. The second one, uh, in this uh, age, is information is key and who owns the narrative in a combat zone is key. So now you can use it to actually take video footage of artillery strikes, combat, and use this as evidence on either claims towards uh, collateral damage or even if there are challenged uh, questions, what is the effect of the fire? And the last one is that you could also use this as a, uh, to take out target without having to jeopardize soldiers with a binocular and send that target into the command and control system in order to utilize the, those data to actually use effectors in order to do whatever they, they would like to do with the uh, potential threats.
So it, it, it can really influence the totality of a battlefield in, in, in favour of the people using it without really posing a risk to a think, soldiers' yeah, lives. I think so. And, but then again, the uh, capability is like all other capabilities, has its limitations. Uh, this one is uh, ranged up to two kilometres. So if you're talking about mounted operation at high speed, it's not that effective because then the columns are moving at 60 to 80 kilometers per hour. And then basically it's really hard. But on the other hand, this is meant for the troops on the ground and for the vehicle itself in order to self-protect themselves and to actually have a better understanding and make better decision around the vehicle and not necessarily on company or battalion level. I imagine that's especially relevant in the urban combat that sort of predominates today. Especially so, and also with this new version, we have the capability to fly really effective indoor. And that gives the uh, troops the potential to actually fly into buildings, survey different rooms, fly on top of the buildings to see if there are any snipers or whatever threats there might be there. Look on the, uh, down an alley without exposing yourself, so urban operation, this is a very good tool for that. It's an exciting development, I, I look forward to seeing it in the future, hopefully on more vehicles. Thank you very much Jens, you. perfect.